Executive Powers Because of the unique qualities of the Presidency, the qualifications for office are the strictest among the three branches. The President must be a natural-born citizen, unlike Senators and Representatives who can be naturalized citizens, at least 35 years old, and a resident of the United States for at least 14 years. The source of power of the President comes from the language in Article 2, Section 1. The executive power shall be vested in a President of the United States. The term of office is four years, limited by constitutional amendment to no more than two terms. The President becomes a central and unique player in government as a result of the manner in which the definition of Chief Executive is stated. The only specific powers and duties listed in Article 2, Sections 2 and 3 include the power to act as Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, the ability to obtain information from members of the Executive Branch, the power to grant pardons, the power to make treaties with the consent of Senate, the power to appoint ambassadors, justices, and other officials with the advice and consent of the Senate. The power to sign legislation or veto legislation. The duty to give Congress a State of the Union report. The power to call special sessions of the Congress and the inherent power of the President. Even though there are fewer, far fewer powers and responsibilities listed for the President than for Congress. Because the President can interpret the role of the Executive in a broad manner, the power of the President in modern times has increased more than any other branch. From the administration of Franklin Roosevelt to the implementation of his New Deal to the New World Order of George Bush, the power of the President has been on the rise. As head of state, the visibility of the president in ceremonial areas far exceeds that of congressmen. The president is also considered the titular head of the political party in power, and thus wields a great deal of power in relation to party appointments. The issue of whether the presidency is, is turning into an imperial presidency will be taken up in Lesson 7, the presidency. The vice president's responsibility is also listed in Article 2. The only stated responsibility of the Vice President is to preside over the Senate and be the deciding vote if there is a tie. This occurred in President Clinton's first administration when Vice President Al Gore cast the decisive vote to pass the President's budget proposal. It was a key piece of legislation for the new President and set the course for his economic program. The Vice President is also next in line to succeed the President in case of death, and as a result of the 25th Amendment, can take over the Presidency if the President is disabled. Article 2 also outlines the role of the Electoral College, even though it does not use that term, in the election of the President. Simply stated, the Electoral College consists of presidential electors in each state. The number of electors is based on the state's population. The states with the greatest population have the most electoral votes. When the voter casts a vote for president, in reality, the vote goes to one of the presidential elections designated by the candidate in that state. The number of electors for each state equals the number of senators and representatives that state has in Congress. Thus, the number can change based on the census. The candidate who receives the most votes receives all the electoral votes in that state. The candidate with a ma majority of the electoral votes is elected to office. The electors gather in Washington, D.C. in December and cast their ballots based on the results of that November election. If no candidate receives a majority of the electoral votes, the election of the president is determined by the House of Representatives. Specific cases of how the Electoral College affect the presidential election will be discussed in Lesson 12, Nominations, Campaigns, and Elections. More and more attention is paid to the President by the media and the public. Frequent opinion polls track the job approval of the President. The President's personal and public life have been placed under scrutiny. Presidential candidates like Gary Hart and sitting Presidents like Richard Nixon, Ronald Reagan, and Bill Clinton have been criticized for personal as well as presidential acts. This microscopic view of the Presidency, according to some political scientists, has weakened the institution.